Hello, I'm Lewis and this is DIY Machines. And in this video, we'll be going over the HC SR04 ultrasonic sensor. You can use this to measure distances and detect presence when using an Arduino or other microcontroller. Parts of this project have been sponsored by PCBWay and I'll tell you some more about their services later on. What does it look like? Our ultrasonic sensor module measures about 21 millimeters high, 45 wide and 15 deep, excluding the pins. The front of the module houses the transmitter, receiver and a ceramic resonator. On the reverse of the module, we'll find the microcontroller, which generates the ultrasonic pulses, measures echo signal timing and outputs them as results. The central component here is a specialized ultrasonic transceiver IC or integrated circuit. This drives the transmitter on the front and then processes the receive signals from the ultrasonic receiver. It also performs amplification, filtering and conditioning of the echo signal. The third IC is usually a voltage regulator. This is used to stabilize the input voltage for more reliable operation. We'll go over the pins and what they're for later on. What can it be used for? Low cost ultrasonic sensors such as this one are handy for a variety of reasons. You might use it in a robotics project to detect obstacles. You can use it to measure liquids inside of a container and they've even found their way into our installations, just to name a few. How does it work? The HC SR04 works by emitting a short burst of ultrasonic sound waves. These are sent to an object and then the echo that comes back from it is measured and timed. Essentially, the sensor has two main parts. The first one here emits the ultrasonic sound wave at approximately 40 kilohertz. The other side here, this one listens for the echo. The four pins found at the bottom of the module are labeled as VCC, ground, trigger, and echo. We provide power to the module via its VCC pin. This is typically for five volts. Our ground connection is to the ground pin. We then interact with the module through its echo and trigger pins. It's useful to know that these sensors can typically provide your project with precise readings between two centimeters and four meters of distance. And at the end of this video, I'll provide you with a few other situations which may cause you to get some unexpected or erratic results from your sensor, so hang around for those. How to use it. To demonstrate the use of the HCSR04 ultrasonic module, we can put together a simple circuit. Let's go over now how you can connect it to an Arduino. Now the VCC is connected to five volts power supply and ground to ground. We then connect the echo and trigger to some digital pins. The trig pin will use pin D9. Echo pin to another digital pin will use pin D10. Download the code, which you'll find linked to below this video, and then paste this into the Arduino IDE. Select your microcontroller board, mine is an Uno, and upload it. After the code is uploaded, you can open the serial monitor, ensuring that the board rate is set to 9600. You should see the microcontroller returning a reading every half a second. Place a flat object in front of the sensor now and move it back and forth to see the distances update. Let's go through the code together so that you can have a better idea of what's happening. First, we define a couple of pins. Pin 9 will be our trig pin and pin 10 our echo pin. We then start up the serial connection so we can monitor the output of the Arduino when our code is running. We then set up the trig pin as an output and the echo pin as an input. The trig pin is then also set to put out no voltage signal by setting its state to low. Now we have everything prepared in our setup section we then lay out the logic of our program in the main loop. First, we switch on trig pin, wait 10 microseconds, 
and then switch off the pin signal again. This is how we signal to the module that we would like to initiate a measurement. The module then emits eight bursts of ultrasonic sound waves and sets its echo pin to high. Here we are using the pulse in function, which is a built in Arduino function for timing signals. You can see that we have set it up to monitor our echo pin and to wait for a high signal to trigger the timer. So when the function sees pin 10 go to a high signal, it's going to start a timer. This is going to continue until the pin goes back down to low again and then the timer stops. The function is then going to return the length of this pulse in microseconds and we save this in our variable duration. We then take this value and can use it to work out the distance to our object. Now, the speed of sound is approximately 340 meters a second or 0.034 centimeters in a microsecond. So if we multiply this by the duration of our pulse, we get the distance to the object and back. Because don't forget, we need to divide this number by two because we've timed the sound wave going to the object and back again. Once we've done this, we use these serial print lines to print it to the serial monitor, which we can see scrolling by now. And finally, this very last line gets our code to wait for half a second before taking the next measurement. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are a few scenarios that might just affect the reliability of your reading. So it's worth knowing about these. First up is an object with unusual angles on it. This can cause the ultrasonic sound waves to bounce back away from our sensor or for multiple echoes to interfere and cross one another on their return journey, making it hard for the module to decipher an accurate timing. The second one is sound absorbent materials. Certain fabrics and foams may absorb most of the ultrasonic sound waves, not giving a strong enough echo for the module to decipher. The third one are obstacles that are too close. Generally, anything closer than two centimeters can cause all sorts of interference with echoes going back and forth between the module or at a very close proximity, an inability for it to leave the transmitter reflect back around to the receiver. The fourth one is a high ambient noise. This could be usual sound waves or other ultrasonic sound waves making it hard in an environment for the module to detect the ones that it is emitting and receiving. This is part of the reason why it sends eight pulses so it can look for this signature in the returning sound waves. The fifth one is extremes of temperature and humidity. The speed of sound through air will change in extremes of either of these values. It's not a problem if you're measuring it and taking account for it in your program, but it's certainly worth knowing. And that's all there is to it. The HC SR04 is a brilliant little sensor, which is really easy to use once you've got it set up. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel to find out when I publish some more knowledge bites like this one and my bigger projects. Let me know down in the comments if there are any other modules or projects you might like to see me tackle in the future. Otherwise, until the next video, do some good and ciao for now. So really quickly, before we finish off this video, I want to say thank you to PCBWay for their sponsorship in this video. I've used them to create the PCBs for many of my projects now for more than two years. They've consistently delivered in both quality and speed. If you've never made a PCB yourself, I highly recommend giving it a go via PCBWay. If you're a new customers of theirs, they have a special promotion where you can have your first five PCBs for $5 and they'll give you a $5 coupon. So effectively, you'll just need to pay for some shipping. Give it a go, you won't regret it. Measuring liquids in... Con the second sound... Ugh. Burst of eight ultrasonic shout... Shout... Oh my God. The first emits the sound pulse, pulse, ah.